I'm Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures. Welcome to our YouTube channel and also to chapter three in our book nook series. This book nook that I'm doing is a medieval version. You could make it however you want to. Now, I've been very excited to record this particular chapter. Um, if you know anything about miniatures, especially in the medieval and Gothic sense, there's only one name that springs to mind and I'm very lucky to call this lady a friend, a very good friend and a dear friend and the name is Heather Tracy of Thicket Works. Now there's couldn't do, I could not do something medieval without bringing in Heather Tracy, it would just feel wrong. So when I knew I was going to be doing the medieval version, I contacted her and said, I would love to use one of your elements in my project, is that okay? And she very graciously not only said yes, but this file she's done for free and you can go and download it and put it in your book nook too. So thank you so much to Heather Tracy for this. I can't wait to show you. Are you ready? And you'll have heard me hint about this on Instagram and Facebook. This is what's going in the medieval book nook window. Now you can't see it there in all its glory because the light isn't behind it so I'm just going to try and show my light from my phone through some elements of it so you can see the glorious detail that she's managed to put into this window. And I'm going to obviously put the links to her video and file below this video so if you go over there do subscribe to her channel give her a thumbs up and um, download any of her projects she's also on Etsy I'll put that down below so this was a dream file for me as you know I make all of my SVG files so for me to be able to download somebody else's file and make that was a treat in itself and you can see it easily we've made this window wall specifically to fit this file and how beautiful it is I'll put a photo up now of it backlit so that you can see how gloriously the colors come through for me because I'm using two mil chipboard I did two layers either side of the stained glass so there's an inner layer and an outer layer for the frame I don't know if you'll be able to see that there there's one and then there's a slightly raised one so I did it on the back as well as on the front and then I used two layers of the stained glass which is printed on your home um, printer I used an inkjet printer um, onto OHP paper that was really easy again just do the print and then cut on your Cricut it worked like a treat and then I sandwiched them all together I did do the gold work first before I glued it on to the um, stained glass bit and then the back and you might wonder why I bothered doing it on the back because this project we're only going to see it from the front but I know that when light shines through and I will be backlighting this in the project in a real window you would see the depth of the frame also coming through the glass so I wanted to replicate that which is why I've done it on both sides and then you'll remember when we did this arch window surround there's a little overhang so this window just fits perfectly into there it kind of clicks in place actually and holds itself in and then if you did want to make this double-sided or if you just want to secure it in even more you could cut another one of these window surrounds just the plain one you don't need to deboss it and you could put that over there and I'm doing this backwards to 
sort of secure the window in place. But thank you, Heather, for such an easy, easy file. Such a treat for me. I really enjoyed it. And in fact, I made this before I made anything else in this project. I was so excited to make it. So that is just the most exciting, sumptuous thing I've got going in this project, I think. Please do go over and give Heather Tracy some love and thanks. Um, and right, on to the next bit now the very slightly more boring floor and ceiling part of the book note chapter three. Okay, so we have two different SVG files. On the left, we have the ceiling planked files and on the right, the faux slate floor SVG files. And I've also included a short and a long version depending which version of the book nook you're going to make. These are scaled to fit the book nook SVG you may want to double check the width and height once you've actually drawn the pencil lines I'm going to show you how to do in a second. You might want to take a millimetre or so off the height or width, depending on the thickness of craft board or cardstock you used for your faux stone walls. And I'm just putting a photo here of the finished product so that you know where we're heading whilst I explain the next bit. You can see here I've got the floor and ceiling pieces and I've drawn in three millimetres from either side and two inches down from the top. I did three millimetres from each side because that's two millimetres for the width of the chipboard wall and then the extra millimetre depth of the craft board on the surface. And I know I'm recessing my faux window wall two inches from the back and hence why I've drawn the two inch line. If you're not having the two inch inset wall, you'll need to draw again three millimeters from the very back of your ceiling and floor pieces to accommodate the back wall with any wall covering if you've done that. So here's my slate flooring cut from craft board. I had a little blip at the top, but I'm okay with that. It just tore where the mat wasn't sticky enough. And we're going to do exactly as we did with the stone wall, take a piece from the mat and put it over onto the floor, but making sure we don't go over the pencil line and if anything, err on the side of caution inside the pencil line so that when we stick the wall on, we're not pushing it out over the edge of the chipboard. And then I do the back piece, again, making sure that's slightly inset from the pencil lines at the back and the side. And then I put the middle piece on and I do a slightly bigger gap at the front and a narrower one at the back. This just helps to add to the perspective and make the room look longer. You don't need to do this if you're unsure about it. You can make the gaps equal and even. And then I just do the whole rest of the floor. And as you can see, the bit that was notched out and cut off from the mat actually looks quite natural as if it's a bit of chipped stone in the floor and gives a hint of age. I then coated the floor with two coats of clear matte polyurethane varnish. I slightly stippled the surface and it settled into a really nice mottled effect, very similar to a natural slate floor. Now that it's sealed, you could go on and use a grout and wipe it over and that would add another level of realism to this floor. So now onto the ceiling. I cut my ceiling from brown craft board because I know I'm going to stain it to look like wood. And again, just make sure that the width and height exactly fit the markings out on your ceiling piece. Glue your planks on, making sure they're inset slightly from your pencil line and it's up to you how much of a gap you put in between your planks. I shrunk the width of my ceiling plank SVG file by a couple of millimetres just so that I had a small space in between each plank. But it really is up to you to decide the size of the gap you want and the width of the plank that you'd like. I wanted a nice rich dark tone for my ceiling so I chose a walnut wood die and brushed it on in the direction that I would want the grain to go in an actual plank of wood. 
It took me two coats to achieve the level of colour that I wanted. This next step is completely optional. I chose some square balsa and this is 3 8 of an inch square and I cut two 6 inch lengths from it. Again, you'll need to measure the width of your ceiling between the two pencil marks for the side walls. Always allow extra so you can file it down to fit. And then I stained those with the same walnut stain that I did the ceiling planks. You can notch out odd bits to make them look aged and stick them at equal distances along your ceiling or again have a bigger gap at the front and a smaller one going back to force the perspective of an elongated room. If you did want to put a ceiling light in this project, the beams are ideal for you to hide the wires behind so that you don't see them from the front of the book nook. So there we have the ceiling and floor pieces ready to go and be built into the book nook. You may want to age them, stain them and rough them up a bit. And I think I'm going to put some greyish grout in between my slate slabs. So make sure to join the Spellbound Miniatures Facebook group because I'll be putting my updates in there as I go. And we've also got extra tutorials in there, especially if you need help importing SVGs and the debossing files. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you with chapter four when we actually construct the book nook. And I'll leave you with some more photos of that glorious Thicket Works stained glass window.